Politicians talk, experts talk, scientists talk. But what do ordinary people think about climate change? To find out, we went out and asked. Today we present to you the results of our new climate survey. But that's not everything. We wanted to find out how humanity is managing and how nature and the environment are coping with this situation. And for that, we've come to Denmark. In a moment, we will tell you why. From the heart of Europe to the whole world, this is What's the Matter? Public support for renewable energy expansion for climate action has never been that high. A gente já está nessa altura que já deveria estar mais fresco e ainda assim está super quente. Mes parents, il y a un impact sur la source de revenus à cause du réchauffement climatique. En fait, il y a des mauvaises récoltes. Ils ont, ils ont, ils ont du mal à produire. It's not only the environment; it's the people behind it that are suffering the consequences of it, uh, mostly in the global south. We are feeling it. We produce less, and we are feeling the heat of the climate change. And that is not good. Is that fair? You've heard them. Climate change is, no doubt, one of humanity's biggest challenges. The European Investment Bank just released the fifth edition of its climate survey. And the first thing we found is that two-thirds of people in Europe believe that the Russian invasion of Ukraine and its consequences, especially the energy crisis, should accelerate the green transition. Because people feel it. Four out of five Europeans say they feel the effects of climate change in their daily lives. And there is a sense of urgency. Europeans are almost unanimous in saying that if we do not drastically reduce our consumption of energy and goods in the coming years, we will be heading for a global catastrophe. The survey also covers the UK, the US and China, and in many aspects, the results are comparable. Now that we have the main takeaways, it's time to talk to the experts that have all the answers. it's time to add some insight into the meaning and the consequences of these opinions. For that, we have invited today Edouard Lesserre, the pooling expert in charge of this survey. Good Thanks morning. for being here, good morning. And Nancy Sage, the chief climate change expert at the European Investment Bank. Thanks, Nancy, for being here with us. Hello. Edouard, let me ask you first, was there something in, in these results that struck you? Well, maybe two things, actually. The first one is the closing gap between perceptions and experience of climate change. You can see that this gap is getting closer and closer, which means that experience is building also uh, opinions around climate change. The second thing, maybe, is that, you know, in this moment where with Ukraine war, inflation, people might just be focused on their daily lives difficulties. And actually, they are not. They are also thinking ahead. They do think that climate change transformation is important, is there and should be triggered, even more maybe than before the war. And, and you, Nancy, is there anything specific in, in the survey that you found the most surprising? I think perhaps the sophistication of the answers. Uh, we had over 50% who were talking about the need for much more investment in renewables. We had uh, almost a similar amount understanding that the Ukraine war requires us to have more independence from fossil fuel and that renewables would help with that. But we also had nearly 20% of people who were seeing that we need to do much more on energy efficiency of buildings and industry uh, and that we need to reduce the demand for electricity. So that was a very sophisticated answer answer that um, you might normally see from experts, but we see that from the population. So they're really well informed. They, they really understand the problem, but do you think that people are really pushing for, for this transition to happen, Edward? There are important proportions of the opinion asking for their government to take stricter measures to change people's behaviour. In a way, they are more advanced than their government think they are. 
And in this process, what is the role of the European Investment Bank, Nancy? Well, uh, finance is critically important here. Um, I mean, public and private finance. And so at the European Investment Bank, as the EU bank, we are doing our part uh, laid out in our climate strategy and our climate bank roadmap. Uh, and that really is about not only financing a lot more renewable energy and low carbon transport, but also as well, making sure that everything we finance is compatible with the temperature goal, the 1.5 degrees temperature goal, and making sure that everything we finance is resilient to climate change impacts. Do you think that people um, in Europe, the US, China, share this sense of urgency that uh, Nancy just expressed? Oh yes, absolutely. Just one figure, about 80% of the population we surveyed say that if we don't change the way we consume energy and goods, we are heading to a global catastrophe. That's the term we use. It's not a threat that is coming one day, it is now. Do we still have time to stop this doom scenario? Yes, we do, but we have to act very fast on it. The time is very short. We have perhaps uh, seven or eight years left to halve emissions by 2030. That's what we need to do. And we need to do it in all parts of the economy. So we have to start now and we have to be very ambitious and urgent in our action. Absolutely. Thanks both of you for being with us today. Let's move now to gather some scientific data and analysis about what is happening in our planet. We go back to Denmark. We go back to you, David. Thanks, Mercedes. We've come here to Denmark to find out what's really going on, how climate change is affecting on Europe and the world. Here in Denmark, in Copenhagen, are the headquarters of the EU agency that looks after this data and helps us to shape environmental policy and climate policy. Let's find out more about this. Hans Brownix, head of the European Environment Agency, Thank you very much for having us. It's my pleasure. The agency gathers data, produces assessments. It acts as a thermometer for climate and environment. If that was the case, what would you say the temperature is for the patient? We are uh, having a fever and a serious fever. We've seen quite a bit of improvement in some areas, but overall the state of the planet is not doing well. I mean, we're facing a climate crisis. We're facing a challenge of the extinction of a couple uh, million species potentially. We are also facing resource use challenges that are unsustainable if we want to provide well-being for 10 billion people. And if we don't address the underlying illnesses, uh, we will not sort this out. According to our latest survey, half of Europeans want their governments to prioritise the development of renewable energies. Where is the EU on that? Are we moving in the right direction? We've got a very clear trajectory towards uh, net zero emissions. That means our energy system will be mostly based on renewable energy and that is facilitated by legislation, by working with economic actors and of course also by the financial means where the European Investment Bank plays a critical role. So Europe is in the lead in terms of ambition. Uh, the, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating and that is implementation. How do we translate knowledge into practical solutions to better adapt and mitigate the effects of climate change? The basis is that we should radically step away from thinking that business as usual, but doing it just a bit better, will work. It will not work. So we need to not only think out of the box, but we need to translate that now in what that means in action. And that means working with the financial sector and radically stepping away from financing what we know is unsustainable. We need to phase out fossil fuels. To end on a positive note, can you tell me something that the Europeans are doing really well in the fight against climate change? Absolutely. I think Europe's agenda, and that is where we have responsibility, is by far the most ambitious, most integrated, systemic agenda for climate, but also for biodiversity, resource use, that we have any place on the planet. So Europe is in the lead with a concrete law on climate uh, neutrality by 2050. I think it's, it's fair to say that Europe is in the lead when it comes to these ambitions. Thank you, Mr. Brownix, for sharing your insights. We get it. The world is feeling the effects of climate change. But it's reassuring to know that some things we are doing in Europe are moving in the right direction. Mercedes, this is all from us here in Copenhagen. 
Thank you, David. We have seen the data and we have heard the experts. There is no doubt we are facing the biggest challenge of our times. We need to act now and we better get it right. Thank you for watching. See you in the next edition of What's the Matter?